Talking financial organization and a professional practice does not have to be boring. Are you ready for a few money in, money out ideas? It's Susan Gunn coming directly to your head to make you think. Can you handle the truth? Because she is known for being energetic, laughs a lot, and gives honest, sometimes direct, but always practical advice. It's time now for Money In, Money Out. Thank you, Lord, that this year is coming to a close in a few weeks. As the COVID-19 cases, though, are rising higher again, the reality of this year being over does not mean this crisis is over. Gosh, that's a hard one to even, even say. Theodore Roosevelt said, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. Okay, well, you might have floundered a little bit in 2020, but hopefully, hopefully you have evaluated the lessons you've learned and you are ready to apply them to 2021. Let's not repeat the same flounderings this upcoming year that we've done in the past years. We've been given that opportunity to get our acts together and to get our information together to move forward together. So, to help you with some more concise steps to implement in your practice, Joining me at the table is the internationally recognized expert <laughs> consultant, Debbie Castagna. She has literally spoken around the world coaching practices in what we're going to talk about today. She's co-authored nine books, has been recognized since 2005 by Dentistry Today as a leader and consultant, and is a recipient of the Academy of Dental Management Consultants Elite. Charles Kidd's Spirit and Service Award. Beyond these amazing accolades, <laughs> Debbie truly is compassionate about her clients and the success of their practices. She listens and has the gift of encouragement with the bonus of a gentle cattle prod, if it's needed, by the way. <laughs> she is most definitely a results-oriented consultant. But more importantly, Debbie is one of my dear friends. Her compassion overflows, and she always has a reserve for her friends. But one of the things I enjoy most about Debbie is the deep belly laughter that we so often share when we're together, and I'm sure that will come out during our time today. So, oh, the stories we could tell, but we won't, will we? Welcome, Debbie. Oh, Susan, that was unbelievable. Thank you for the, inv the invitation. And no. No, no, no. We're not going into those stories on this professional <laughs> podcast. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we could make that a whole podcast. I know, but let's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'd actually be really funny, but hey. Oh, it man. is what an amazing time. Oh. I mean, who mm -hmm. knew that 2020 was going to end up like <laughs> yeah. this? Yeah. Who the knew? last time you and I were together, we were at um, the Chicago Midwinter meeting. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And I remember going to that first reception and... You know, people were saying, should we hug? Should we believe what we're hearing on the news? And yeah. look where we are. And yeah. just a, like a few short weeks later, the McCormick Center was yeah. a portable hospital, mobile oh, hospital. I know. Isn't that amazing? It was amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. So there's a lot of things <sighs> that our clients have learned this year. Mm. <laughs> yeah and some things that they didn't want to learn but they had to yeah. learn it anyway or, so. or and probably some things that they still need to learn that yeah. they're yeah. refusing to learn but hey yeah yeah you know that's the case for all of us I think mm. so I, I wanted I just kind of wrote down a few of the lessons that we learned that um, go along with your gifts and your expertise mm. and being able to help them and the first lesson of 2021, 2020, I'd say lesson one, is that our, our clients, our practices need to have an easy system mm. to track their numbers mm -hmm. at any time. Mm -hmm. I mean, did we not learn that they need to have to be able to touch that information at a moment's notice? Yeah. Are, are you asking me? Are you? Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you were just going to go on with that, but yeah, it's absolutely the truth. And, you know, one of the things I remember 
having a conversation with a, a client and he said, you know, I've been getting phone calls from some of my buddies who don't track their numbers and who don't have support for their business. And, you know, he said, I thank God that I am intimate with my numbers and, you know, I, I understand my overhead structure and it's the truth. And, you know, well, yes. Sure, yeah. yeah, it's sure easier to control a crisis if you know what reports you right. need to review, right? That's for sure. That's for sure. And even with, you know, annual planning and budgeting and all of that aside, you know, some of my clients were finding that they were digging in a lot more deeply to systems that, you know, we thought we had a pretty good handle on that still had some real potential. So actually, that was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, well, and they, you know, if they were shut down, they had time to look at yeah, it. They, right. I got a lot of phone calls during the shutdown time of, oh, uh, I don't know what I'm looking at in my chart of accounts, oh, or how yeah. do I get the numbers for my adult loans? You mean you had time for phone calls with the, yeah, all the webinars yeah, we were taking? Me. Yeah, all, <laughs> all the, no, the uh, webinars I was giving. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And oh, all the Facebook live things. I and, know, I know. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm. But part of the help of that is mm. to having a chart of accounts yep. to know what areas of the practice need managing. Mm -hmm. For sure. You know, I was so lucky early in my career to, you know, working with Pride Institute and, um, you know, having a foundation in the importance of doctors being business people and learning that whole process of annual planning and knowing how to analyze a profit and loss, et cetera. And, you know, I've looked at probably thousands of profit and losses yeah, over the yeah. years, right? Yeah. And, you know, when a doctor has a chart of accounts that is, you know, much more specific than the, the typical profit and loss statement that they receive and they're, able to use that document as a management tool versus a tax document makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, it does. And there's a couple of things I would tell them to do for that. The The first thing is no accounting numbers because you guys are not accountants. You can turn that off. And, and if your CPA is doing your profit and loss reports, have them turn off the accounting numbers mm. before they create the reports for you because it'll be a lot, whole lot easier to understand. And then have in your chart of accounts, make them words that you know. Not, yeah. I, I actually yeah. had a client one time that asked me, is there a dictionary to understand all of these terms? <laughs> yeah, why would they know? Why? I mean, I didn't know. How would have I known? I was a dental yeah. assistant, you know? I mean, no, it's like come on. In, in slash P, you don't really need, it's a notes payable, okay, in slash P. Oh, is that what that but is? Why is that necessary? <laughs> yeah. just, just say practice loan. You know, <laughs> I, I remember this young guy, he had just bought a practice maybe two years before, and he was just overwhelmed by running a practice and, you know, and all that goes with that. And, you know, as is the case with, with most of my new clients, you do an annual plan. And I was going over the P&L with him and I could just, this guy was pained, you know, he was just so confused by what he was seeing. And I'm going through each line item and we're talking about how to expand the chart of accounts and he looks at the word depreciation and he said i have been looking all over my checkbook <laughs> you know he an amortization yeah. and where's my loan payment i just see interest i know i pay my practice loan i mean this poor kid he was just so yeah he, he didn't know he didn't so yeah yeah, that's why I put uh, depreciation and amortization, if if amortization is in there, mm -hmm. um, in the other expenses area, not in the main body of the chart of accounts. Very smart, so, Susan. Yeah. Thank so you. Comes, uh, well, now well, you tell me that? Yeah. After all these years? Well, like a long time ago. <laughs> but hey, but in, and to be fair, so I have to tell this story because it is, um, a Debbie and Virginia story together of when you guys were yeah. speaking in 2004 in Las Vegas. I think that was 2004. Holy it's smart. when I, it's when I redid it, but I wasn't happy with any of the chart of accounts anyone used at that time. And I really wanted to know what you needed from 
the practices mm-hmm. to do your job better and what kind of to know what kind of a format to create the uh, practice management chart of accounts. And that's how I came up with the practice management chart of accounts I was know. based on what information that you guys need from the practices. And yeah. so it was a bonding experience. I remember exactly where you were sitting in that course. I remember the light bulbs and the conversation. I mean, that was a very, very cool creative time. That I remember me. ducking when you mentioned that I was there. I was trying to hide. <laughs> why would I why would I not mention that you were there? Come on. I was trying to be an anonymous <laughs> instead of annoying. Not anonymous. <laughs> but um Anyways, it was such a great time because yeah. it was the real ha-ha. And that practice yeah. management chart of accounts has really changed, I think, the way that dentistry has created their mm. profits and loss accounts. Mm. I think it's really held the CPAs to change it to more understandable. Because at the time, QuickBooks was still fairly being sabotaged by a lot of CPAs for yeah. being used by yeah. practice owners at the time. Because right. they said it was you know, too hard and they can't do it, but oh my gosh, (laughs) practice software is so much more difficult than QuickBooks. Yeah. And so, and, and, you know, it's only 15% compared to the other 85% of the practice software. But um, at the time, you know, uh, CPAs were afraid of being, losing their jobs, I guess is the way to say Mm. that. And so they were doing what they could to hang on. But Mm. now it's the whole environment regarding that is so different. You know, and I'm just, can I put a a big plug out there for uh, dental CPAs? I mean, when you think about this last year and, Mm. you know, most of my clients work with ADCPA accountants, not all, but I'm telling you, those that do, (laughs) they were heroic yeah, Heroic they were during those months. Kate Will ever, was oh, on the first four yeah. podcasts that I had. Yeah, I they and were, Alan, they were great. Alan Schiff has done a lot of work. I mean, they yeah, are amazing yeah. people, and they yeah. they they all said, "Oh my gosh, you know they when this whole pandemic is over and things are straightened out because things are still pretty chaotic for them." Mm. Um, you know, because we've got a new tax season <laughs> for the year, and we don't really know what's going to hit it, but. Kate's going to be on my last podcast of the year. So that's going to be kind of fun. I began with her in the year and I'll finish with her. Perfect. So anyway, that's the chart of accounts. That was lesson one was that you needed to have an understandable uh, chart of accounts so that you would know what your reports were. Yeah. And, you know, and for anybody that might not know what that means, it simply means being more specific with what's within that particular expense category. I mean, that's how I think of it, Susan, right? Is that what right. you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so to have them more easily defined. More easily defined. So if you've got a overall category that says computer expense, and that's the dumping ground for everything from equipment to your text reminder system to your IT person to, you know, all of that, you know, to be, have that all broken out appropriately makes all the difference in the world in terms of a doctor's ability to manage. Right. And, and it's, um, it does help that Mm. it does help. That kind of ties into lesson two to get control of your expenses. Yes. Oh yeah. Because it's easier again to control a crisis if the expenses are already controlled, right? Yeah, you bet. You know, I'm thinking about this, these uh, two young doctors that I work with the bought a practice um, it'll be two years in January. And when I was going through, speaking of computer expenses and IT, um, going through their profit and loss, and we were separating everything out and, you know, looking at how we can make the, the chart of accounts more specific for them. And they're brand new with this first time business owners, and they were paying a company, which shall remain nameless, 3000 dollars a month for it support <gasps> three thousand a month oh my god and they thought that that's what they should be paying that that's what the go it's like holy smokes so oh, yeah. you know and, and he, that's the thing wow. you know you you need to um 
not only look have the, the support, but look at the details and shop yeah. around and ask your friends and call whomever and, you know, saying, wow. And so um, it was amazing what we were able to do when we were looking at, you know, where they, they were overspending. Right. Well, and I had a client that called me and said, oh my gosh, I just wanted to tell you that I've just knocked off $2,600 a month. I think it was 26, might've been 16, don't know. But anyways, the bottom line was she had really cut out a lot of expenses that weren't needed or necessary for the practice. And they weren't needed or yeah. necessary in the first place. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just because of the pandemic that she didn't need them, but mm -hmm. she had never had the time to review the expenses like she did. And then when mm -hmm. it was, you know, when you've suddenly got a pandemic thrown in, into the mix, you're going, okay, how can I tighten yeah. up this job yeah, exactly. and make it, you know, I mean, I kind of did the same thing on the personal side. Of course. So did you me. know, what are those automatic, we get kind of lost in the automatic uh, credit card charges, you know, so what's automatically hitting our credit card charge that maybe <laughs> we don't need. And how many meditation apps can one person have? Well, I don't know right now, <laughs> probably not enough. <laughs> I'm just going to say. One is doing it for me. I didn't need all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> or the wine clubs. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Again, might need more wine clubs. Oh, man. But anyways, there are some um, major areas. What are what do you think that, that practices overspend for? IT mm -hmm. is probably one of the ones I see the most. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. You know, that is so all over the map. And, you know, one of the things that, that you learn when, you know, you've been working with Dennis for a lot of years that, you know, it, it, I mean, it could be, I'm thinking about my, my spreadsheet starting at the top. I mean, it could be overspending for, you know, certain staff fringe benefits that they really can't afford at that time or a particular salary or um, their own, CE, you know, it was, it was interesting. I mean, but, you know, the, the pandemic hit in March in January between November and January, I'm, you know, eyeballs deep into doing annual plans with clients. And I had to redo in July, we redid every annual plan wow. and, you wow. know, we, I had to, you know, because I, I'm so ingrained in the numbers that having an annual plan that doesn't make sense anymore. Didn't make, I mean, it just didn't make sense to, and, and there's been, you know, so many of my doctors I've worked with for years and years and they were right on board with that. It's like, yeah, we've got to redo many things about the plans. But one of the things getting back to your question of overspending is um, sometimes CE, you know, a doctor might be involved in, you know, CE that might, they might be investing 30, $40,000 a year. And, you know, because many of those and and not I'm not saying don't spend money on CE. First of all, you know, as long as you're getting a great return on your investment and it's showing up in productivity, that's one thing. But you know, if there was twenty thousand dollars worth of courses that had to be canceled because of the pandemic, it was a blessing in disguise. So, you know, yeah. you you look to yeah. that. You look to um, lab, you're looking at return on the investment in certain marketing um, expenses. I mean, you know, gosh, Susan, it could be no, I know. so I, many things. I had a uh, dentist one time um, that I created his chart of accounts, set up the employees divided like I do with what you pay for wages versus the benefits mm -hmm. in the two separate areas under one category of employees so that you know the overall of the percentage for the employees. Mm -hmm. And we were, we, he was going to start creating payroll himself through QuickBooks. And so we were setting up the payroll items for the individual uh, areas. And he, he did Aflac, he did medical insurance, mm. he did, he paid their city, lived mm. in and city worked in taxes. Mm. Mm. And I kept saying, I think you're going to be surprised at what you're paying for your employees. Yeah. Mm. I think you're going to be really, really every, every little benefit. I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh, he ended up spending the percentage of income. So the percentage of the money that he brought to the practice collected for the practice, he spent 53% on his employees. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
53 yeah. percent I look like oh my gosh yeah and then you know sometimes you're sitting side by side with the doctor and we might be of the opinion that you know this is a very generous fringe benefit or or whatever the case might be but you know my my first inclination isn't about slicing and dicing but it's about where's the potential for the doctor to be more profitable. Right. You know, if a doctor has their heart set on a certain expense, it's like, okay, well, let's just figure out right. how to make this affordable. Yeah, I actually had a dentist that said that to me too. He said, I spend too much on my employees, so should I just fire one? And I went, no, 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 no. Maybe you're just lazy and you're not collecting enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you're working with so many plans where your adjustments are such which and and that talk about yes. a lesson learned oh, and yeah. something from the pandemic. It's you know how to in a in an intelligent way back out of plans if that's where the doctor's inclination is. But that can make a tremendous difference. Yeah, it sure can. It mm. Sure can. You know, yeah. just collecting the money up front could really help. Yeah, but that was the last. About that that was our last podcast. And so, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I had Linda, Linda and Jody on. Yes, talked about that. So. My buddies. Anyways, My buddies. Um, what do you think is the most underspent area of a practice? Mm, that underspent. would really, that, that not just underspent, but underspent huh. where we would return uh, the investment, would enhance the revenue of the practice. Hmm. I am seeing faces, clients' faces right now flying by. And what might they be? Well, probably marketing on one of them, right? Well, it depends on the practice again. You know, I've got practices that might spend two tenths of, of a percent on marketing, but their practice base and their internal referrals are such that if they paid, you know, 3% to marketing, it it just wouldn't make sense. So yeah, and certainly in, in some cases, it, that's the thing. All of these decisions are so practice dependent. You've got to look at the whole picture, not just one expense category exactly and so you know the it, it could be it could be marketing um god what are they underspending on and i might say i know that i said ce for uh as a place where somebody might be overspending you might also be underspending true on c especially or appropriate ce, CE. Or appropriate CE, right? Especially with the staff. I know a lot of my clients think with with my being there that they might not need to spend as much on CE with staff, but I don't agree with that. I mean, I was a staff member and you know that's that's uplifting. You know, I don't have all the answers. I hope they I want them to to uh, be involved with staff CE and giving back to their community and you know all of those things that can really make a difference in terms of, you know, how you love what you do. Well, I know a lot of practices um, did not get their trip to Disney World this year. No, um, they didn't. With the ADA no, canceling. Yeah. And, uh, it was so sad. But... Well, Vegas next year. Let's hope. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Mm -hmm. Gosh, Vegas again. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so the, the third one that I would say, the third lesson that we've learned in 2020 is to know your numbers. We've talked mm -hmm. about the design, we've talked about your expenses, but you need to know your overall numbers. What is the true overhead of your practice? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is in in corporate world, we call that the break even point. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is your break even po point? And I a lot of the listeners may not know that QuickBooks has a percentage of income that they can turn on their profit and loss. Um, reports so that they can see the percentage of each one of those areas oh, cool. for yeah. the income. I mean, that's a, to me, that's a mm -hmm. no brainer tool that I show, mm -hmm. but you know what you mentioned annual reports. The reality is a majority of practices never work on an annual plan. I know. I mean, isn't that interesting? Well, it isn't anymore. I, yeah. Yeah, because, no. <laughs> because I, <laughs> Sorry about that. But, you know, nice snort, Susan. Um, <laughs> now I feel like, you know, we are in some restaurant or bar. Yeah, up it's so not, not, not. Drinking a margarita. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, only because I don't know if I've ever 
sat down with a doctor that has done an annual plan, at least an annual plan, the way that, you that know, I've done it, yeah. that I've done it over the years. So, so it isn't surprising, but holy smokes, you know, one of the, the best things as grueling as the process can be the first yeah. time for a lot of doctors. I'm telling you in my own business, it has absolutely been um, the gift that keeps on giving, because even if I'm not working in a more comprehensive way with uh, a client, they want an annual plan every year. Well, it's, it's a mindset. It becomes, it's a, it, yes. yeah, it becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. And it's important. And they know, thank goodness, that they learned that it's important and that you need to take that time to plan for the upcoming year. And like I said, you know, all those annual plans went to hell, really, you know, the first quarter of the year. No, no but uh, we we had enough information to. So Ann it. Sullivan, I love this quote from Ann Sullivan. Uh, Ann Sullivan said, people seldom see the halting and painful steps by which the most insignificant success is achieved. Mm. And I would revise that to also include very significant success. Yeah. has its own halting and painful steps, especially this year. Mm. I've, I've, I've often said um, a successful business doesn't happen by accident, but by right. careful planning and implementation. Right. You're absolutely. And oh, so we can't so just, true. you know, and, and I see that in dentistry, a lot of times we focus so much on the clinical, which, you know, yeah. of yeah. course we need course. to, but you don't focus on the business side of that, mm -hmm. then you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, so, so many conversations and I did this, you know, spear study club on Friday and, you know, the, the, how do I even get started? You know, the, you know, how do I even begin? There's so much vulnerability around it. It's not like, okay, you know, we, we do this like breathing, and, you know, to, to think that a doctor is going to sit down and pull their annual plan and project the expenses and figure out their work, you know, all of that is, uh, is daunting, but, you know, you, you hope that with, um, some enough, you know, enough encouragement and some steps, it's, it's indeed something that a doctor will, will uh, try to do on their own. If not, well, tell me. Give us the steps to create an annual plan. Yeah. So, um, you know, in a, a very condensed, straightforward way, um, and I'm thinking more with, a, let's say, a, a brand new doctor or someone that hasn't done this before, is to first look at your profit and loss statement and to open up your QuickBooks and get access. And when you look at that particular expense office supplies and you say i spent thirty three thousand dollars on office supplies that you know what's in there okay, and hang so, on a minute debbie yeah when you talk about creating the profit and loss report when you sit down are you talking about the year the full year before as the far full, as the date yes. range great question full year before so okay. they're 12 months before so um because this has been one of those years you know, what I've done, and I just did an annual plan last week for 2021, but we had this doctor's 2019 P&L. We had the P&L through October 31st. And so, you know, we were able to, with enough history, pull together the information that we needed to project the expenses. So the importance of analyzing a profit and loss, then looking at that document and determining whether or not you need to expand on your chart of accounts so that you create a management tool for yourselves. And you can look at how you spend your money in those different dental expense categories, you know, total employee expense, associate, um, you know, your chart of accounts. Once you have that information, your historical P&L information, then you use that as a launching pad to project your expenses for the upcoming year. So you, I, I go through every single line item 
you know, from projecting salaries, you know, we look at every team member and say, is that person's salary going to remain where it is? Is there going to be a salary bump if merit and profitability are in place? If so, how much, at what point? I mean, it's detailed yeah. and it's that with every single line item. Once the budget for the upcoming year has been determined in this year, you know, is there going to be new loans based on, um, um, SBA and different loans that a, a doctor might have taken this year, or how are expenses going to change? Your doctor is going to be kind of holding back and not spending as much. Are they refinancing loans? What are they doing that's going to impact the budget for the upcoming year? Once that's complete, then it's determining work days. And uh, work days for the doctors, if there's hygienists, how many work days is there potential to add more? Are they going to be reduced? Is the doctor going to work more or less? You know, all of that, those right. conversations are ensued. Once the work days are determined, then it's projecting uh, the, the production goals. So, uh, you know, one of the other things that I, that I need to mention, because I know that this is going to be happening for me anyway, is also looking at if a practice decided to transition out of Delta or another PPO, what might that look like? You know, how is right. that going to impact the collection percentage? How might it impact attrition? So, you know, there's a lot of really awesome conversations that happen as a result of digging in and, and really talking all of this through. So once the production goals are determined, production goals, smart goals are based on history. So with my own clients, I know the historical production. I know, I mean, we're tracking that on a, on a monthly basis. So what's the history been? What do the expenses command? And where's the potential within the practice? So we look at all of those things to come up with the best goal. So sort of the no brainer for potential is a fee increase. So will there be a fee increase? If so, you know, approximately what percentage if they did, you know, so it's just looking at all of that. It's math. It's simple math. <laughs> so once all of that is complete, then it's determining the action plan to make it happen. So it's an action plan, but even more important to that. And, you know, we can speak to this as consultants is the accountability element. So the annual yeah. plan isn't, you know, stored on your, your desktop. The annual plan is um, becomes part of your everyday life from, you know, responding to where your schedule is booked to, to the end of the month when we do our numbers meetings. And I have a numbers meeting with, with every one of my clients. It's celebrating what looks great. And if something doesn't look so great, it's identifying what the cause is and then uh, creating an action plan to fix it. So it's always about forward momentum. And what I tell everybody is, you know, I don't get emotional about these numbers. You know, I, I well, at least I tell them that um, <laughs> it's, they're, they're, they're neutral, you know, numbers are neutral. I'm, I'm not going to say this is bad. You know, what's wrong with you people? It's like, what happened? Just tell me what caused it. And then we can come up with what's going to fix it. Yeah. And so I would also say that, that this one little step further is uh, calculating the hours of the days that you decide you're going to be open. Mm -hmm. And when you have your plan for what your expenses are going to be, then you can divide your um, expenses, the total amount of your expenses for the year, divided by the total amount of hours that you're going to be open. And then you have a cost per hour. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah that's cost, yeah. you know, it's in the book, money in, money mm -hmm. out. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, that one, <laughs> Thank you for the, the, the one that Debbie contributed to. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, So, but it's, um, but I like that from my side yeah, of the no, day, beautiful. you know, per hour, this is what it's costing you to keep yeah. open, which yeah. might keep some of the, um, and I think that's shareable by the way. Oh, that, oh, well, that's exactly yeah. what I was just thinking. You know, if you've got an unfilled hour and you know that that number is 237 an hour, whatever the heck it is, then wait a minute, 
that cancellation for that profi hurts. Yeah, sure does. It's not yeah. that, you know, we got to be mindful of things that way. So yeah. I like that. That's awesome. And you kind of mm. went over this, but lesson number four for 2020, I think, is that we can't count our chickens before they hatch. <laughs> Just to put it in my dad's terms. I yeah, talk about him say. so much on my podcast. Oh. But um, dad said, if it, the money's not in the bank, then you can't count it to be in the bank yet. Mm. And so um, I think 2020 started out, everybody I've talked to was going to have a most amazing year. Best year ever is what I was hearing from everybody that the plans. I mean, my my January, February were awesome, you know, and then March came. So it's, yeah. it's still a good year, but yeah. because yeah. a lot of people are needing help, yes, which, you know, we can help them with. But um, I think the hard thing was, is that a lot of the dentists didn't have any um, soluble cash, any cash, mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. accessible cash. They were, mm -hmm. um, and probably because they didn't have a, a plan, an annual plan, they were living uh, deposit to deposit and the margin was really narrow. And so knowing that, Debbie, what kind of net profit do you recommend? This is so funny. And I'm so glad you brought that. Well, what I'm hoping to see is at least 5% and that's built into the annual plan. And, you know, the, the conversation is around having a business savings and, you know, where a doctor chooses to put that money is between, you know, their own smarts or conversations with their, their accountant. But the reason why I'm saying that this is a funny thing, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who is a very successful businesswoman, not in dentistry. And she was telling me, we were talking about our respective businesses and, you know, money and, you know, the issues around that. And she said, you know, I pulled out a book that I've always given to high school and college, uh, college grads. And it's been a book that's around, it's called The Richest Man in Babylon. Have you heard of it? Oh, book? yeah, I have. I've read it. So yeah. I got on Amazon right away, ordered the book. And if you remember from the book, it says that you should put away 10% of everything that you bring in, right? Yeah. Remember yeah. that lesson? Yeah. Okay. So, so I've been doing that. And of course I put money away for retirement and all of that. Of course that's, that's in place. But now every time I make a deposit, I slide 10% over. And I am telling you, it's like, why didn't I read that damn book years <laughs> ago? Years ago. I mean, I am with, yeah. I mean, it's remarkable. If yeah. it's not in my checking account, I'm not spending it. And it's like this, uh, and, and I teach this stuff, right? <laughs> well, so this, the plumber's house is, is always the last to be plumbed, just to let you know. I guess so. <laughs> so I've been talking to, to my clients and about this. And they're like, 10%? Are you out of your mind? I thought you said five. And I said, I don't know. I'd give this a shot. It's been yeah. working for me. But yeah, and whether or not it's uh, you know allocated to tax savings or that piece of equipment that you've always wanted or finally getting that remodel or one of, I almost said a bad word, pandemic hits and <laughs> you need some cash. We'll translate that. Later. That, and you need, it's there. It's, yeah. it's, it's, oh. What I mean, can, the relief of it all when yeah, when I was I was a uh, a little cash poor uh, in February yeah. because I went to Ireland and to the UK for two weeks, and then this hit. And I was like, yeah. okay, what planning on that? I was planning yeah. on having lots of uh, uh, revenue to to build it up back up again. But hey, you know, it, it still it just took a little bit longer than what I thought. And it's still all good. But no, I even, yeah. so one step further, just FYI, when I speak, I always encourage the doctors to talk to their staff, mm. their team members, and to have them put aside 10% mm -hmm. out of their paychecks into, yeah. they can do that through direct deposit, yeah, 10% right. through to the savings account and the rest of it into their bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you that most people will say, but I need every single dime. 
You'd I be surprised. Know. I that's what surprised me. Yeah. Yes. You know, and Great. Course, we're not traveling as much, so that helps. You know, we're not oh. we're not spending out, and you know, can't the restaurants aren't as accessible. Oh, and, right. I mean, well, I learned that in in Amazon uh, Florida is way last too week. Yeah. Usually, when I'm in Delray Beach, there's a cute little shop that I go to, or taking somebody out to dinner, and it was like ramen on the corner. You know, taking it back <laughs> to my room. Really, it's like yeah. wow. 13 bucks for dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty that amazing, happen? right? Saving money. You put the rest of yeah. it back in your savings. So I know. Yeah. Yeah. There it's um it's been really interesting. I just I think it's gonna be how do they even how do practices even plan for their production and collections, knowing that probably it's gonna take at least six months to ramp up any kind of a vaccine. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's going to take a while for anything and um, mm -hmm. to take effect. So well, how do you even estimate? Mm, I, you know, you, you do. I mean, I, you, you've got to look at history. You've got to look at what's, I mean, the history might be what's happened this last month. Right. And, true. and, and what is it that we need to project and, what is it that we need to do right now to help to fill the schedule? I mean, I, and you know, Susan, what a huge sports fan I am and, and what a jock I am. And I've been talking to my doctors about playing offense. At least I'm a 49er fan. So I know what playing offense means. And <laughs> okay. So for the listeners, I have to qualify. Debbie is not a sports person. Well, Just FYI, I mean, I kind of like it, but well, uh, but I, I anyway, not I when mean, you that... send me an email and ask me if the Texas Rangers made it to the World Series. <laughs> well, I knew they were decide if you were seriously asking or if it was a joke. <laughs> Stop. It wasn't a joke. You know that. But but it th that's what the conversation has been is you've got to play offense now, you know, whether it's communicating to your patients um, all that you've done to protect yeah. them and to protect your staff and take a quick video of that patient that walks through the door and says, wow, you know, I've, I've never felt so safe. I've always felt safe at your office, but now look at this and push out this information because we, we want to make sure that it, pay, you know, it was so funny when this whole thing started, my brain immediately went to 2008 yeah, and the patients weren't going to have the money to um, to pay for dentistry, and not to minimize the fact that that is the case for some people. But then it came about became about the virus and people being afraid to come in, and and you know, and there are still patients, of course, that are of that ilk. But we really need to go after it. We can't be complacent. We can't be victims of what the news is saying you just go after this stuff and so that's you know, well like... and i'll say from my standpoint it's also um communicating in such a way that conveys real care and concern for the mm. patient mm. themselves mm. always and i don't think that's a text message and i don't think that's a recorded message i think that's a pick up the phone and call yeah. mm -hmm. and i i will tell you uh, practices, if you guys get shut down again, you need to have those kind of communications. If they're big conference calls with your t team members, That's right. I heard from team members that didn't even hear from their doctor. Yeah, And I'm yeah. like, really? Other than to say that they weren't going to be open, they'd call when they were. Mm -hmm. So that's not keeping, uh, um, I, I yeah. would, if it was my practice, I would keep up a weekly team me meeting, that's, oh, for even sure. if it's on Zoom. Yeah, hey, this well, is where we're at. And does anybody have any ideas for when we can get back in? Yeah. What do we need to do? That's what. And so, um, yeah, that's those what kind of things did. help. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world. Well, that's a lot of information we crammed into a very <laughs> short period of time. And, and we just like, I mean, just skimmed the surface. Scratched the surface of what we could talk about, right? Well, that's why I have. Uh, guests that come back <laughs> so we yeah. could talk about it again next mm -hmm. year and say okay here's where we're at and here's some new fresh ideas 
for yeah. you guys to consider. But I wanted them to hear about the annual plans mm. because so many do not do annual plans. Right. But I will yeah. tell you, if there was ever a point and a time um, in our history that you needed to have yeah. an annual That's plan, sure. it's now. You bet. It's now. Absolutely. Don't go into 2021 without considering and going through the things that Debbie uh, put out there and looking at your information and, you know, call her if you've got questions. You, you know, bet. she's there. Why don't you All give right. them your website? Sure. My website. Right. Thank you, Susan. It is castaniacoaching.com. Castania is C A S. T-A-G-N-A coaching.com or Debbie at castaniacoaching.com. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Well, can you think of anything else that we forgot or that we didn't cover that you think mm -hmm. they need to hear? You know, I because balancing the the oh my gosh, you know, we've got to um uh get through this and prosper and learn. And I, the, the one thing that I'd add to is you've got to take care of yourself. You know, I've had so many doctors say, you know, in our zoom calls, we just need a, a little mental health meeting. You know, we, we, let's not talk about the numbers today. You know, somebody just tested positive or we're freaking out about this or, you know, and it's, it's like, let's, let's just um, take some deep breaths and, um, and give each other some grace because that's what people need right now. And, um, know that with a plan and great systems and good communication that of course we're going to get through this. I mean, there's no, there's no other way around it. Yeah. Well, you know, it might take time, but yeah. we got to hang in there. Okay. We got we to hang in there. Yeah. There's no other option. Right. We, I always say, control the things you can control. Mm. You cannot control the pandemic. Mm, but don't sure. let the pandemic control you. Perfect. So, well, Debbie, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I thank love you, that you gave you. such great information mm. that the practices can put immediately, immediately into place. That's My amazing. Mm. I really pleasure. appreciate you. No, I appreciate you, Susan, so much. So let me add a couple of things just in closing. Okay. Um, my phone has rang many times this year from doctors that have begun to look deeper into their profit and loss statements like we talked about. And they've got questions. So many of them have needed a QuickBook Extreme makeover. Some have converted from QuickBooks Online, trying to rein in the cost. Some have taken charge of uh, QuickBooks inside in-house instead of the CPA but some have realized that not was all right in their practice. Some have realized the numbers didn't match up with expenses being exorbitantly high or income being exorbitantly low. Their gut feeling was right to call me because someone was embezzling their very hard earned $20-$20. Bad enough, 2020 has been hard, but then somebody stealing from you makes it harder. If that's you and you're listening, please do not hesitate to call. The initial phone call, that's free. Let's see if your gut's right. If anything, we can do an ask the expert call, which is me remoting into your practice with you online and you see what I see. I show you, you see your practice through my eyes. That alone, that call alone, could help you create a system to help protect your practice against embezzlement. Truly, I am not trying to sell you something. In fact, I've done so many podcasts that I've not tagged on anything. It's just about the information that I can put in your lap or in your space. I talk about things I offer occasionally, but... This is your time to gain information from the guest, not me. But I got to tell you, don't dismiss your gut feeling. If there's an embezzler in your practice, they don't suddenly decide to stop until they're caught. Catching them 
is what stops them. It doesn't just go away. Ignoring the problem is not the answer. The longer it goes, the higher the embezzled dollar amount goes. Call me. Let's approach 2021 with all the information you need, you need to be successful. That's why I create these podcasts every two weeks, to provide you the information you need to encourage your success. I love hearing how you learn something from a podcast and put it to great use. I love those emails. Thanks. They're awesome. It's really fun, too, uh, especially when they say, you know, I loved how you laughed with your friends. You know, <laughs> that's that's almost a given in any podcast. So what's the schedule? Well, let me tell you, Teresa Duncan had me as a guest on her podcast. Nobody told me that. I don't know if you guys are listening to that podcast, but you should add that to your listening queue. Teresa is just as adamant about getting information to the practices that they need to be successful as I am. I've been on her podcast a few times now, but this last time, oh my goodness, we talked about an embezzlement case here in Texas that you won't want to miss that podcast. It's going up on December 2nd. I'll post on my Facebook uh, page the link when it's released, but it's going to be really, it's really good. In fact, I, I did that one and went, oh my gosh, I had so much fun doing that, that on December 7th, I'm going to discuss another case from recent embezzlement headlines. I won't discuss dental embezzlement cases. Because of the availability of these podcasts, I really don't want to train anyone to embezzle. But there are so many similarities between cases outside of this industry that have applicable lessons that we can call. So that's on December 7th. December 2nd on Teresa's podcast. Nobody told me that. December 7th on my podcast. You'll have to stay tuned to figure out which one I'm going to talk about. Then on December 21st, we're going to have a podcast about a 2020 review with Kate Williford. Kate was my first, second, third, and fourth podcast guest as we were tackling the issues of a shutdown industry. I thought it was only fitting to have her help me wrap up the year and let's talk about some of the ti uh, timely tax implications. We might have a little bit more knowledge by then about some things that are going to be in the queue. Then in the new year, on January 11th, we'll pick up with a new podcast and a conversation with Catherine Itell about how to lead the way into 2021. I have an amazing group of guests already scheduled for 2021, and I am so excited to bring them to you. I have thoroughly enjoyed these podcasts, and if you have enjoyed them, please share them in your Facebook groups, with your study clubs, with your dental colleagues. Help them be successful in 2021, regardless of what lies ahead. Until December 7th, you guys take care and stay safe. That's a wrap for this podcast of Money In, Money Out. Thanks for listening. Be sure to write down the most valuable tip you learned today so you don't forget it. And remember, you can find out more about all the valuable books and services Susan has to offer at www.susangunsolutions.com.